speaking up when it comes to my virginity. Oh, so you've done other things. You think I want to go eat lunch on my honeymoon by myself? I'm not a mind reader. I didn't know where you were, so I just went and had lunch. Where else would I have gone? And welcome to Little Black Book, you already know what time it is. It's Little Black Book, you know what time it is. If you're new to the channel, make sure you like, share, subscribe. And for those of you who are returnees, you ain't got the minerals, baby. You already know what time it is. We're here with a matter first sight review, baby. Listen, so, um, I mean, I, I'm a bit late. Sorry, guys, I've just been... You know, I've been studying the Word of God and I just needed some time away from YouTube not to not to, to edit anything. But I thought, let me get this um, episode 4 out, I'll get episode 5 out by the end of the week, hopefully as well for you guys. But just to kind of comment upon, um, you know, th th this this particular episode, I think it was quite interesting to see um, certain flashpoints within each couple. Um, love, obviously, Keith and Iris, and I'm going to start with them. Um, I love the fact that they've got great communication. I think it's always... Um, evident, I mean I've said this in the last few weeks as well, it's evident that they are opposites in the sense of when it comes to communication verbally. He doesn't talk as much, she does. And I told him that I went ahead and just told you straight up like with my virginity and how that goes and how after you letting me know, that's awesome, I commend you for it, great going straight, all that good stuff. Right. They were all... Um, and I think that works because he's more of a listener, she's more of a talker, he's happy to be patient, she's happy to talk. Um, I feel like she puts a lot of words into a sentence a lot of the time, which are probably not necessary, but that's the way she is. Like when you ask her to explain something, she's gonna explain and she's gonna go on. But because he's able to listen and be able to be sturdy and, and take time, it's not such a much of a problem. So I can see how it works um, for them and stuff. So again, just pushing on that point I think especially in relationships I feel like you know it can be difficult sometimes to communicate and I feel like if if people are not self-aware and both of you are clashing in the communication area that's where it becomes difficult but luckily enough for them to she's a talker he's a listener and I feel like a lot of relationships don't often always have that dynamic um, and so what happens is when the person does talk they kind of override the person trying to explain their point to um, which can happen quite a lot in relationships. So if you're in that kind of situation, you just need to be open and honest with other person that doesn't look. I wanted to be able to say, can we please not like talk over each other? Like when I want to say my point, just sit there, just relax, let me just be able to say what I'm saying. Like I, I've had conversations with people where they're like, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, I'm hearing you. But the uh-huh is I'm ready to speak as soon as you stop for too long. Um, so that like, sometimes makes it very hard because it means that the person, how much are they taking in? How much are they listening? How much are they actually hearing what you say, do you know what I mean? And that can be a little bit frustrating as well. So it's good to see them two obviously making it work the way they are and, um, you know, the Bible says faith cometh by hearing. So you know what I'm saying? Like, the strength to act accordingly, you know, to God's will is required by the listening. So the listening is very, very important. Do you know what I'm saying? So understand that listening is very, very key to your relationship as well. I think the next kind of thing as well, and I've been saying this as well, I think the last few weeks as well, about, I, about Iris. I don't like you holding this virginity up to a point where it's on a pedestal. Your virginity, it's good that you are a virgin, don't get it twisted. But let's not hold it up like it's the most amazing thing ever. Like, we rate it that you've held your, your virginity up. But your virginity at this moment is becoming a shadow on this marriage. I mean, your virginity has become bigger than this marriage. Um, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the fact that, obviously, you know what? Um, you know, she's even asking him, I mean, are you, I mean, are you here for the, this for the experiment? Are you here for, um, you know, the actual long-term thing? Because I don't want to give my virginity to anybody. Well, babe, you got married. I want to make sure that he is here for the right reason. Because at the end of the day, this is the man that I maybe possibly lose my virginity to. So I want to make sure that he really wants to be in this. You're a good looking guy. You got married at first sight. So you're asking that question, it's silly. You ask that question about are you really, are you here for that? What do you mean? You signed up for a, a, a married at first sight where you're legally married. This is not like you're, oh, we're going to experiment and see if how good you would be as two people in a couple. No, you're married. So now when you're holding this Virginia up into the sky, like, ah, oh, like I'm looking at them like, why are you holding that Virginia? You're almost, you're holding that Virginia higher regard than your actual marriage. 
Um, and so for me, it frustrates me. That's what I'm saying. This is I said it before. I said that energy that you're bringing, just yeah, people are virgins. They hold this chastity, but are they virgin in mind? Do you get what I'm saying? And then she explained it later on, even when she was saying, obviously, you know, like, they were talking about sex or whatever, the group, or whatever. And then obviously she had to mention that, you know what, like, oh, uh, pretty much... And the point of going as far as to have sexual intercourse definitely is something that I am cherishing and I'm keeping. And, of course, I wanted to hold for my husband. They keep I don't calling have, it sexual intercourse. Because you can't say sex, because there's variations of sex, but sexual intercourse is the act of having sex. Oh, so you've done other things. Okay. All right. Well, that's good to know. I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't sure, but I guess. Thank yeah. you for clarifying. Yep. Yeah. Um. But I, on your hand, you've done it all. Yes. Mhm. Mm yes. <laughs> Pretty much done a lot of things other outside of the virginity. So why are you holding this virginity like as a big boy thing? You've done everything else in between. You're not. It's not. It's no longer virgin. Do you understand? Know I want people to deep it. Like I'm not saying don't hold your virginity. What I'm saying is. Brother, you've done everything else in the sexual department. Don't hold that virginity like it's an amazing thing because you've done everything else in that department. You get me? And your mind is seared. Your mind has already been taken to a certain place. Just because the thing didn't penetrate you doesn't mean that you're 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 you're, you're one of these you're, you're pure and um, art doubt. Do you know what I mean? And I, I I don't like that because that's not what virginity is. So if you hold it like that, just make sure you know that the other things on the side should be going on too. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like sometimes that's what happens with people. But again, I'm not trying to trash her. I'm just trying to make that point clear. And at the moment, I feel like she's holding this virginity higher than natural marriage. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens in the coming weeks in terms of that that particular thing. It's like, I don't think she's going to give him the sex until this experiment's done. I'm like, why did you enter this marriage? You, you, you could have just gone and found somebody. And got to know them, and then when you got married, you'd have the freedom to enjoy. The, the marriage is where the marriage is meant to be. You're enjoyed. Do you know what I'm saying? The marriage is meant to be enjoyed. If you're burning, marry. As the Bible says, if you're burning with lust, marry. Every man should have their own wife, so they may have sexual relations with them. Yeah, that's it. Shall it marry and, and and be free? But I'm now getting married, and I'm doing this virgin thing all over again. Why didn't I just become your friend? Why did I get married, all of this stuff, for, I'm not saying that marriage is about sex. What I'm saying is that, why don't we just do a friendship thing then before then? Why do we go to church to get married and not try to do a married stuff, married couple kind of stuff? <sighs> anyway, um, so it, I find that quite interesting as well, because when I was younger, um, a lot of us guys used to say like, oh, you know, we want a girl who's a virgin, want to marry a virgin, because, you know, da 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 da. Meanwhile, most of us were not virgins, but trying to marry virgins. Look at the audacity. And look at the standards of, of what we put on women as well. That's the pressure we put on women to be um, to be sexually um, constrained and, and, and to, be, to have low numbers um, so that they can fit our narrative as men. And that's incorrect. It's wrong. Um, because we don't do that same narrative for ourselves. Intimacy. Um, she has saved herself up to this point for marriage. What? She is a virgin. That's mm. exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Ah. Oh man, <laughs> that his wife is a virgin. Ah, I I salute, I salute uh, Iris and Keith. I, I'm just glad that it's not me. You got problems with that or like? Nah, and I'm and honestly I'm not rushing it. Like right. you know, which is something I definitely got to take into consideration. And like you know, I know it's a super serious thing for her, yeah. and I don't want to put any kind of pressure on her to do anything that she's not comfortable with doing with a stranger. Yeah. Um, we don't call each other hoes and sluts as men, but we do call them in that, and that's wrong. That's incorrect. That's not that's not godly either to label someone that, do you know what I'm saying? So it's quite interesting to see how us boys then um, wanted virgins when we were younger, but as we got older, we realized, no, 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 there's too much stress dealing with virgins. Let me just take a normal gyal, because I've been through a mad thing, and I know that, you, you know, getting with a virgin, the, the difficulties that are there, there's an emotional attachments that come with it. I mean, even learning how to have sex with that person is, a, is, is an issue as well. So there's a lot of things that are around it that necessarily when we were young we weren't really thinking about because we were boys then. But now we're like, because we assume that being a virgin was attached to obviously our oh, pureness and a good wife will be someone who's a virgin. Not realising that that doesn't make a, a good wife. And that's what I'm trying to get, I want to get into our heads because I want to get what 
uh, Iris is doing as well. Look at that out of her head. It's not made you a better wife because you didn't have sex. And you're saving your sex for your husband, but your husband's not getting any right now. So what are we doing? What are we saying? Yeah, it's, at the moment, it's, just, it's a pride thing. And I don't, I don't like that, man. Do you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, that was them. It was interesting I got into Elizabeth and James, actually, because I feel like... You know what, they, 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 when she got, she said oh, she got no period in it so the sex had to be delayed, I was so happy, I was like, yes, because we don't want to see you have sex. Why? Because the moment you do that, you're going to ruin things. You're yeah, 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 yeah. I'm so jealous. Amber had sex and I'm so upset that I didn't get to. I go ahead of time that you don't need to do and I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to see them get ruined. Although I feel like sometimes their energy is a bit mad, I don't want to see them get ruined and I feel like they've got good potential if they can knuckle it down. Because they're both inherently very selfish. Like, that, that is just the truth. He wants it his way, she wants it her way. But they're finding a the middle ground at the moment. And I love that because, again, compromise is about finding that middle ground to be able to accommodate each individual person. You may not be a win-win completely, but we can at least bring something to the table. You bring something to the table and we're compromising on what we can do moving forward. So I really appreciate um, Elizabeth and James for that and for them leading, leading the way in that area. I think obviously just watching them, I think in the, I think the, the most important part was watching their argument um, when um, she, Elizabeth came in the room and said, where were you? Uh, I was waiting for you at the dinner, dinner, and he was like, well, I was waiting for you. Um, and obviously when you went from the basketball, from the volleyball, I assumed you went off. Am I self? I'm not a mind reader. What if I would have done that to you? Put yourself in my shoes. I kind of feel like you did the same thing first. The other wives waited. Where? Where at all did you think I was going to stand out in the heat and do that? And it's like, assumptions are the greatest source of arguments and also the greatest bane to all of our relationships. Let's stop assuming. Assume, as, uh, relationships are intentional and must thus be conducted as such. Intentionality. Yeah, we want to be intentional about everything that we do. Why? Because when you're intentional about everything you do, you ask questions, you don't presume, you don't assume, and therefore, it's not guesstimation, but you actually know what the other person is trying to achieve or what they want. Now, if this thing started, obviously, because both people are hurt, both people wanted their own way, and both people as well um, assumed, and also they wanted to, 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 to have this kind of, I guess, to give a time, but didn't want to admit they wanted to give a time. So, they're downstairs off the volleyball. She obviously has got a, 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 you know, a body of sand and that's natural, she can understand that, she wants to go and clean herself. But she doesn't mention obviously to him that she's gone away to go and clean herself, therefore miscommunication there, that's a problem on, on, on her part. But he also didn't ask her, where are you going? You know, are you going upstairs? Okay cool, like, what, are, we, are we eating later on? He could have said that. Now when she goes upstairs, obviously he then, wait, it's not, it's, not, it's not sure what she's doing, he then goes off to go and eat by himself, he's assumed that she's gone off somewhere, um, you know, and doesn't want to entertain it. Cool, she comes back into the room, he's there, um, and that, all it was is that there's a breakdown of communication, in intentionality, a breakdown in terms of saying, look, what I want to eat, I want to eat dinner with you, that's as you were saying, you know, he wanted to eat with her, and he felt quite hurt by her leaving, why? Because he assumed that she would be going, coming back. You, that was your problem. Um, she also was very hurt because she assumed that, when she, that he'd be waiting for her when she comes back down. You're both assumed. And you bloody deserve each other. Um, so you have to deep it. Like, I want people to hear this and say, listen, when I'm in a relationship, I don't want to assume. I know that, you know what, you said you were going to work and you came back at 9. Now, did I want you to come back at 8, at 7? Because I could do that. Yeah, but I, are you assuming that I'm going to come back at 7? If you are, that's your fault. Don't blame on me. You gotta communicate that you want me to come back early, or you want me to come back at the same time today because I'm I'm doing something, and that's how a lot of people get hurt and then don't want to do something for another person anymore. Well, I ain't doing this no more for you because I did so and so and such, but no one told you to do it. Number one, number two, you didn't ask the person, can I do this for you? And so therefore, there's hurt and pain left aside for you. Um, and it's funny as well. They both lied about wanting kids. They deserve each other. I said it. <laughs> um, I won't say anything less about that. Um, Diona and Greg, I felt, I felt like there's, it's quite an interesting dynamic at the moment. Because Greg is obviously this really kind guy, he's got a bit of banter about him, wants to have a bit of a crack in the chat, wants to have a bit of a fun time with her. And Diona's got the walls up. Um, but it's quite interesting because I still kind of noticed certain behaviour patterns. So for instance, um, Diona mentioned as well that, you know what, uh, here with Greg, someone that I just met like a few days ago, is 
oddly comfortable. Like, we're holding hands, you know, giving each other kisses, hugs, like that type of thing. It feels, feels right. Um, the hugs and kisses feel natural, um, but yet her opening up emotionally has been stagnant and actually a little bit more harder. So how come physically she's okay? And then obviously she later on down the line as well asked him for a massage and I started to realize, oh, the girl's a physical touch kind of love language. That's how he's gonna reach her. She's happy, she's comfortable expressing her emotions, her feelings or certain acts, acts of the mind through physical touch. And so she asked him for the massage. She's obviously said obviously the hugs and kisses feel natural. She's comfortable on that playing field. Um, but he's a words of affirmation type of guy because when she obviously said to him, there's too many compliments and I, I do you know, I kind of get it. You know, when someone says about too many compliments, I, I can see different scenarios as to why that could be. One, it could be as well, you know what, sometimes when you feel like you're not a good person and the person's complimenting you so much and they're just, they're always constantly complimenting you, you feel bad because like, I'm not that good and you're complimenting me that much. Stop. Sometimes often as well, when someone complimenting you that much as well, it's just like it's a bit too much. It's a bit too sweet. And your, your, from your experience, you don't want to date somebody who's too sweet. You feel like it might end, or you might feel like, you know what, they're just doing it for a, a particular cause. You may feel like, you know what, actually, you know what, it's just too much, it's overbearing. Uh, because I don't have the words to, to articulate that same thing back to you. Um, and as he mentioned as well, you know, it would be nice to hear you say that back to me too. You made a little joke of it, but he was being serious. Uh, you know, your man, your husband, wants to hear some compliments too. Okay, yeah, now I got you on that. So I, I, I don't want, do a whole bunch though. So I want like 75 a day. Greg um, was saying saying some stuff and he didn't say it with his chest. So he was, it's basically about when he was talking to the boys and he said to her, you know, yeah, you know, he made a little joke first of all about something. And then he then um, went on to proceed to talk about his situation, but didn't, he had to, he almost started a little bit, didn't know what to say, and then said what he needed to say. Sorry. I didn't think, I didn't have any. Of course okay. you did it. Of course. Here we go. Of course. Now, what were your concerns? The only concern I had was, um, I mean, to be honest, we got... You know, Greg is a person that is very respectful, very calm, but doesn't particularly like confrontation. And so, you know, when he explained it, he was like, oh, to be honest, I don't know how I'm going to explain this to her, da, da, da. But the truth is the truth. You've got to explain it. Do you know what I mean? Um, but he's got to save his chest. Because it was about, obviously, he said he told the boys about the 10 years thing. And that can be a red flag. Um, and she actually genuinely looked hurt by that. She looked hurt by that. I think she felt like she wanted a piece of... And do you know what I felt from Di Diona? It's like she wanted loyalty there. She wanted him not to mention that maybe. But the truth of the matter is it's going to get mentioned. Um, you know, to see her that she's not at the affectionate stage. Um, because, you know, he lent in uh, to say something in her ear and I can't remember forever. And she didn't flinch at all. She didn't move. She didn't react to him. She just literally sat where she was sat. And for me that lets me know that, do you know what? At the moment, you are struggling with affection and intimacy. You're struggling with that. Um, and that's, that's normal because obviously 10 years, so I can understand that. Um, and obviously, you know, I just believe that obviously, you know what, last ending point is that, you know what, partners will push you out of your comfort zone, you know. Just watching um, Greg and Donna as well, it was interesting to see that, you know what, um, unlike uh, my predecessors, um, what do you call it, um, Will and Jasmine. Will didn't want to do the, the zip line, and I, think, I don't think he even did it in the end. But with Donna and Greg, Greg was like, actually, I don't want to do it, I'm, I'm scared, da, 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 and all this stuff. But then proceeded to do it because he felt like, you know, I have to support her. You know, that's what a, a, par a partner can do for you. A partner can help blossom some of the stuff that you would never necessarily look at or even do. Um, and that's the importance of having a good partner who can bring out extra qualities that you are hidden that you don't even know are out there. And so, yeah, I mean, I mean, by the grace of God, I appreciate you guys for actually listening to me. Let me know what you feel down below. I didn't want to comment too long this video, but let me know what you feel. Let me know your ideas and your thoughts um, down below, um, and we will talk in the comment section. Guys, make sure you like, share, subscribe. You already know what time it is. Are you mad? Are you mad? You lean. Wakanda is forever. Hotel is forever. Yeah.